This afternoon we're going to do a spotlight session with uh, Dr. Ernie Ko from Taiwan. Uh, it's going to be a topic called Sustaining Good Governance in the 21st Century Through Trust and Transparency. Uh, my name is Michael Ketsley. Uh, I am the Research and International Relations Coordinator here at IF4. Um, as you can tell by the accent, I'm a New Zealander. So hopefully you'll be able to understand me for the next few minutes. Um, let me explain what we're going to try and do this afternoon. Uh, we're going to, first, I'm going to give a, a brief bio on Dr. Ko. He's then going to present to you uh, his paper on Transparency International. Following that, I'll give you an opportunity to ask him a few questions. And then after that, I'm going to invite uh, a, a, a brief panel uh, to come up here, and I'll introduce them to you. They will give their thoughts on transparency and trust as it relates to good governance. And then it'll give you the opportunity to contribute uh, to the rest of the session. And we can discuss together um, this particular important issue. Uh, you know, I think whilst we've got the best brains in Asia right now in this room in terms of social sciences and sustainability, we've got a grand opportunity for all of us together, we, to uh, produce our ideas and give our opinions and share what we know. Um, I will go on now and just give you a little bit of a bio about um, Dr. Ko. Uh, Dr. Ko will be presenting a paper this afternoon that's titled INGOs, International um, and Non-Governmental Organizations, uh, Development and Fission, a Case Study on Transparency International. Okay. And just to let you know a little bit about uh, Dr. Ko's uh, background, uh, he received his PhD degree um, from the Department of uh, Diplomacy Studies at the National Chinchai University in Taiwan. His PhD dissertation was on Transparency International, which I don't know if you know this, but it's been around for over 20 years, doing a lot of important work in the area of anti-corruption and good governance. Uh, Dr. Ko is one of the leading Chinese scholars in this particular area of anti-corruption. Uh, his quest for achieving good governance has been stretching back for many, many years. He holds uh, graduate degrees from the George Washington University and also the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, also, he was the INEES scholar, visiting scholar, to Estonia uh, just a few years ago as well. Uh, he is currently the assistant professor teaching in the General Education Centre at the National Taiwan University of Arts. Uh, his pro bono work uh, is his current position as the executive vice director of Transparency International's Taiwan uh, chapter. Uh, the other thing, of course, about Dr. Ko was that uh, earlier this year, he coordinated the global launch of the uh, Government Anti-Corruption Index for Defence, that area of defence spending and arms and all those sorts of things. Um, in, an area, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in an era when far too many of our issues are settled through violence, it is important and timely that such an initiative as this, which Dr. Cohn has uh, developed and helped set up, uh, is now you know, here for us to make use of and you know, we can understand what's going on out there, that transparency thing. Prior to his teaching career, Dr. Ko was a senior journalist based in Washington. Uh, he was based in the White House during the Clinton administration. Uh, look, you know, seriously, when you are a journalist and you get to be in the White House as a, as a correspondent, it's, it's a bit like um, playing at Wimbledon if you're a tennis player. It's like Augustus if, if you're a golfer. You know, it is the big leagues, it's the big time. So that gives you an idea of the credibility as a journalist that Dr. Ko can bring to his uh, talk this afternoon. But also, 
as we know, his, his passionate interest in the areas of trust and transparency. So, uh, without any further ado, I would like um, you to give a warm welcome for Dr. Ernie Ko of Taiwan and his presentation this afternoon. Thank you. Can you hear me in the back row? Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to present my topic here in such a special venue. My name is Ernie Ko. I'm from Taiwan. Uh, in this presentation, I will use the short name TI uh, to stand for Transparency International. I am the assistant professor at the National Taiwan University of Arts, and also my pro bono job is the vice executive director of Transparency International Taiwan. Uh, last night in the dinner, a guest asked me, uh, is, is there any uh, conflict of interest uh, to present the topic which is relate, related to my, to my job at Transparency International Taiwan? Uh, frankly speaking, I think I don't think so, because I finished this paper before I took this pro bono job as the vice executive director. So I think uh, after finishing the paper, I have more uh, more the opportunity to go into the practice to verify which my w whether my paper is valid, credible or not. So far, I think the answer is still positive. So I'm very encouraging. So I, I would like to present this paper in front of all you. Many of you know that TI is one of the leading uh, brand names in the global anti-corruption movement. But I think very few of, of us, at least from my knowledge, very few literature so far deal with the leadership struggle and the causal relationships between its internal struggle and its policy outcome. This is not, I have to stress, my presentation is not a paparazzi, paparazzi uh, report, but this is indeed, I spent a quite amount of time to do the investigation and in-depth interview within TI, focusing on the mutual trust and its internal struggles. Hopefully, I hope my uh, this presentation can fill in the so-called literature vacuum in this uh, regard. We know TI has done a tremendous job in the past 20 years. It was founded in Berlin in 1993. In my view, TI is as good as Amnesty International and the Red Cross. If the Red Cross can receive the Nobel Peace Prize twice, and Amnesty International wants. Uh, I would not su surprised if TI win the Nobel Peace Prize in the near future. That's why I think this topic deserves some attention. Now please let take a look. This is uh, the presentation I'm going to do today. I'm going to do the. Uh, for the, the contribution of the TI to do some anal anal analytical description, and then I will tell you about something about the Greece growth vision and the Exodus personal trust problem. Okay, this is the uh, overview. Uh, you, you see the world map. This is the, our annual publication. We call this Corruption Perceptions Index. From red to yellow. To white, you will see uh, the color more deeper. That means more corrupt. Can you check your own country? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet all of us uh, would like to live in the North Pole or the South Pole because it's white. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's scary people living there. That means if there's people there in the society, there's a certain degree or a certain level of corruption. Also, from this page, you can look at the, the cluster effect. Okay, the cluster. Uh, 
within the group, you will see the cluster is centered either in Africa, uh, Latin America, or Asia. Or we can specifically say that in Central Asia. We publish this index every year around uh, no November or December. Besides that, we also develop new tools to measure corruptions, such as uh, bribery payers index, global corruption barometer, and the newest index is called, just like uh, Michael introduced a short while ago, it's called Government Defense Corruption Index, GDAI. How do we do this globally? Last January, I personally coordinate the first global launch of this index. So before I, I start to say other things, I will present a short video clips to share with you how we coordinate with other national chapters of GI and our headquarters in Berlin. We do the first global launch of government's, government defense uh, anti-corruption index. So please, can we show the video now? Why we use this? This is a very, this is a very unique, I think it's a very nice way to consolidate all different national chapters within TI. Because we all have our own problems within our national chapters. Okay. Let's see. Let's go back to the Transparency International in the headquarters a little bit. This is our current city uh, chair, Madame LaBelle, Wiki LaBelle. She's a Canadian. Uh, she's a very nice lady. Uh, what, we did, what we did in the past few uh, 20 years, you will see, there are three main things that I think we, we deserve some credit. One is the branding. <coughs> branding. We create a unique brand name for anti-corruption movement globally. The second is the monopoly. Monopoly probably is a bad word for ec economists, but in, in the uh, civil society, I think this is the, it's not the bad thing. We are the main or monopolist of the so-called global anti-corruption movement. Whoever wants to study or talk about anti-corruption, they will use our CPI, <coughs> Corruption Perceptions Index, as, our, as the main source. The third one is media publicity. You will see, if you check the Google uh, or Yahoo, you will see lots of things by typing CPI. And it pop up with CPI, Transparency International, or TI. Okay. The other thing I think we deserve some credibility, credibility is the uniqueness of the transnational advocacy. We call this a boomerang effect. Usually, the NGO become the victim in, at, domestically, they will seek the outside uh, assistance. And then the, the outside international NGO will uh, approach the, the major powers and then come back to the home country to do the persuasion or pressure. <coughs> but this is not the way for TI. This is the typical way for AI, Amnesty International. We don't do the name calling. We don't complain the individual cases. We don't do the investigative uh, things. We are not FBI. <laughs> we are simply advocating. We advocate anti-corruption ideas, and we build coalition. We call this a coalition building with our rivals, including politicians, major political parties, <coughs> and also the major decision makers within sovereign countries. Okay. The other thing that we have done uh, in my PhD dissertation is that I consider promoting and making it happen of international norm, especially the OECD anti-bribery convention, is the very remarkable <coughs> contribution to the international anti-corruption movement. Why? Because there is a supply side, there is a demand side. We, if we talk about the bribery or corruption, <coughs> Okay. Usually, the supply side is the multinational corporations, which are based mostly in developed countries. While, on the other hand, the demand side, most of them are corrupt officials or political parties or candidates in the developing countries. 
when, if we want to cut off the supply chain, what, we, what should we do? Most people think about go to the United Nations. Does it work? I don't think so. But by going to, to persuade the, the, the suppliers to cut off their supply, to take the collective action, I think it's a very innovative step. So um, in this regard, TI, Taiwan, I'm sorry, TI headquarters in Berlin, uh, along with American government, work together. This is a very unique case. Usually major power don't want to work with, with uh, NGO very, that frankly, you know. But in this perspective, that we share the same idea and, and interest. So we made it happen in 1997. Uh, this is, okay, this is our first meeting back in 1993. You will see lots of things, lots of people from all around the world, okay? But we are not just a happy family. We have lots of internal family struggles. We have to face it, okay? This is our founder. Usually he will call himself founder. But actually, in my study, he's one of the dozen co-founders. His name is Peter Ivan. I admire him. He's a very professional gentleman. But on the other hand, he also caused some problems. Okay? This is how they do. There are two gentlemen. One is from Germany, one is from New Zealand. On the left is Peter Eigen, on the right is German Pope. Is there any relatives or friends of uh, Peter Eigen here today? Please raise your hand. Then well, I will speak politely. <laughs> okay? I do not represent TI Taiwan today. I present only of my own views, okay? Okay. Don't press the charge, please. <laughs> okay. Peter Eigen, both of the both gentlemen are professionals. You'll see the next, next, next slide here. They they were born in the same year, 1938. They were the they were the first generation of TI. They were the all core initiators of this special global anti-corruption movement. They have lots of common ground, but they also have a profound differences. Okay. You will see, uh, Peter was the former director of African Project in the World Bank, and Jeremy Pope was the legal counsel of the Commonwealth. They both are co-founders. Uh, but they have different ideas of how this organization should develop. Peter Eichen uh, uh, thinks that it should be a centralized uh, organization, but Jeremy Pope thinks it should be decentralized. For the money, financial plan, Eichen thinks that headquarters should control most of the finance. On the other hand, Jeremy Pope thinks we should allocate the sources to national chapters. It goes on and on. Let me read you because I, my time is so limited. I promise that, Michael, I will not exceed my time. Although, <laughs> although I have lots of stories, behind the door story to share with you. I just read one of the, uh, the interview that uh, one of the uh, interview viewers told me. Peter Eigen says, the differences between London and Berlin, London means Jeremy Pope, uh, Berlin means Eigen and his friend. The differences between London and Berlin were mainly personal. This is what he wrote. Jeremy Pope was turning 65, and the board decided that his expensive contract should not be reviewed. He had become too independent in building up our London office, even though he reported as research director of TI officially to the managing director, Elshorst. Another Elshorst is another friend of Peter Eigen in Berlin. Pope agreed to terminate his employment contract under the condition that we appoint his young colleague and friend, Frederick Galton, to the position of research director. This we refused. Galton was not yet ready for his senior position. Therefore, Pope and Galton started a very destructive campaign against Berlin and me personally. Jeremy Pope had been one of my first salaried employees of TI my closest partner in the early, early years of TI. He was therefore popular in the movement, and his campaign was quite painful for all of us. Terrible. Two good friends. Now, 
I have to read in order to you have to do a balanced report, right? <laughs> let's let's hear about something from Pope, Jeremy Pope. Okay. Without a clear policy on the size of the central operation, it will simply continue to grow inexorably. I would never get agree agreement. And as a consequence, there are now, I heard yesterday, today, uh, as of 2009, but we, I can't check, more than 100 people in or around Berlin while the national chapters are starved for cash. Berlin also tried to impose levies on national chapters when the chapters uh, succeeded in raising money for themselves, almost trying to run a franchise operation. It is a sad and sorry story. It goes on and on. So it's understandable that the outcome is that they split, someone goes out like a, like a mouse going through the going to the Egypt. This is how we end up with. So the final blow is another gentleman. He's a very famous economist. He's called uh, Johann Graf Lambasdor. He retrieved from the uh, TI officially uh, in 2009. If you know, if you have read the Corruption Perceptions Index, you will know that he is the original author of this index. He invented this. He's the midwife of this index. <laughs> but he decided to, left, to, to leave this organization once for all. After that, I tried to email him several times. He refused to answer any questions. It's very sad. I'm not complaining his refusal, so okay, to not to deliver wrong message if you're from Germany. <laughs> Nothing personal between me and Johan. So we will see. Uh, let's summarize something. NGO. All international, all NGOs have their own problems. Their common problems include centralization or elites or non transparent. Are they either one or all of them? We all suffer from this common uh, weakness. Uh, so we will be criticized for being sometimes lack of credibility, lack of capacity, or lack of accountability one way or another. There is a, within TI, there is a very awkward partnership because legally speaking, financially speaking, policy speaking, and in practice, we all have different approaches. It happens to, I think it happens to other INGO as well. But it's clear that it becomes part of the problem, our internal problem. We are still struggling for this. You know why? Because very few, very few international NGO like TI. We have more than 93 national chapters. They are all independent. On the other hand, all these national chapters they have indi independent voting right to select our board members within our Berlin headquarters. So can you see the the potential conflict? Independence on the one hand, also voting right on the other. So somebody will criticize that probably, although we call ourselves Transparency International, but we are not totally 100% transparent. <laughs> I have to admit. Uh, but we are trying very hard. We're trying very hard. Or uh, I should say, I'm not within the Berlin headquarters. I think they are trying very hard. In the meantime, in our national chapter in Taiwan, I think TI Taiwan also trying very hard to make it happen. But please remember, we are not living in the North Pole or South Pole. Yeah, we are not totally white. We are either yellow, deep yellow, or deep red in the map. We are trying very hard. Okay, my conclusion is that it's, it involves personal struggles as well as ideal struggles. Okay, the internal, internal struggles cause the faction exodus. The exodus caused some consequences, including the, the, inclu the exclusiveness. Because uh, when Jeremy Pope and Frederick Galton left TI, they found a theory. Have you heard about TIR theory? They found a theory. This is another prominent anti-corruption organization. But theory has never been invited 
to participate in the IACC International uh, International Anti-Corruption Conference every two years happen uh, in different countries. This is the one of the biggest anti-corruption conference around the world. Theory has never been invited so far, at least officially. The other thing is the CPI. CPI, CPI is under ser serious uh, criticism by the sovereign states, especially low, low, those low-ranking countries. But it's getting being criticized among scholars because they think when we're doing something, evaluating the stuff on countries, is it subjective or objective? It's an ongoing debates. So I decided that I start uh, stop here and and leave the the floor to Mike. Thank you very much. All right.